the golden rule. The main model for the dragon world was as follows. Do not impose on others what you do not wish for yourself. In the Bible it is written, do unto others as you would have them do unto you. They both mean the same thing. Kindness was the name of the game. The world needs kindness. Confucius was a young boy when he started learning from the dragons. He was an exceptional student and became a great teacher to man. He studied for around 10 years and then was sent to China to bring greater wisdom to all walks of life. The Golden Rule was the foundation of his teaching. Today, many people know him by Confucius says, but he is far more than the man. He knew the laws of the universe and tried, <coughs> tried to convey them to man. He was one of the first Chinese to directly talk and teach about ethics to people of all sorts of life. He even held political posts where his message could be heard. Confucianism is very much alive today in China. Mind you, this was 600 years before Christ. Confucius introduced many people to the dragon's teacher, teachings. He didn't use the dragons as a reference point. People weren't ready for that, yet he gave many blessings to thousands of people to live and study with the dragon. They got a precious letter introducing them to the dragons. Confucius signed the letter, so the dragons, a man knew that Confucius endorsed the student. Also, Confucius would help people who had lost their homes in times of war. China was struggling. Chaos was all around. Thousands of people were helped by him. The underground dragon world leaped in bounds with thousands of refugees and students arriving. The dragon world was smart. They knew that this was going to happen. As you know, they prepared for the future. Each person and family was given a precious house to live in. Mind you, it would be like today, each person was given a mansion by today's standards. These refugees thought they were given the keys to heaven. They were provided with new clothes, shelter, and food. Little Ricky, the dragon, helped in preparing the food for all the refugees and newcomers. Each day, an incredible banquet would appear for the people. There was so much love in the air. They were all treated with the highest respect and honor. They were treated with dignity. We need that so much in America today. The dragons didn't kick anyone out. Currently in America, you could be living here for over 40 years and be deported. In fact, none of the people wanted to leave. They never saw so much harmony in their lives. The dragons and locals were so kind. The golden rule was alive in this world. Every action was driven by this rule. You see, it truly didn't have to be forced upon. Everyone who lived there experienced such a unity. According to Sima Kwan, a historian at the time relates how a young Confucius went to visit Lhasa. The story goes he asked a question about history. This is Lhasa's response. Those about whom you require have molded with their bones into dust. Nothing but their words remain. When the hour of the great man has struck, he rises to leadership. But before his time has come, he is hampered in all that he attempts. I have heard that the successful merchant carefully conceals his wealth and acts as though he had nothing. That the great man, though abounding in achievements, is simple in his manners and appearance. Get rid of your pride and your many ambitions, your affliction and your extravagant aims. 
Your character gains nothing for all these. This is my advice to you. The story goes that Confucius was so impressed by the old master, Confucius compared him to a great mythical dragon and took his advice to heart. Soon after this meeting, Confucius joined the dragon world and found his true calling. Latsu. One of the earliest students was Latsu. He was truly a man of nature. He spent a considerable amount of time with the dragons. Even at a young age, he was wise beyond his time. Even the dragons were amazed at his knowledge and wisdom. At times, it seemed that his wisdom was beyond theirs. Mind you, these dragons were thousands of years old. Latsu was only around 10 years old. Needless to say, there was great friendship and understanding with each other. At that time, China and Tibet couldn't understand the simplicity of Latsu and the dragons. Latsu really didn't care about politics and worldly affairs. He hardly ever went to cities. They were a complete distraction. Man wasn't open to wisdom or knowledge at this time. So La Su spent a lot of time with the dragon of nature. You see, La Su could see the unity of all life. There is a story when La Su was going to leave this world. A small group approached him high in the mountains. They begged for some insight and wisdom. Today, we are the Dao Chief. One of the greatest books today. Matsu went with some dragons and never returned. His wisdom is still alive today. The Tao that can be told is not the eternal Tao. The name that can be named is not the eternal name. The nameless is the beginning of heaven and earth. The name is the mother of the 2,000 things. Ever desireless, one can see the mysteries. Ever desiring, one sees the manifestations. These two spring from the same source, but differ in name. This appears as darkness, darkness within darkness, the gate to all mystery. The Tao means the path or the way. It is a universal principle that exists in the entire universe. The creation of galaxies and man spring forth from the Tao. As the poem above says, the Tao that is spoken is not the eternal Tao. Remember that speaking about a mango is not a mango. You must eat a mango to understand. Latsu got much wisdom studying with the dragons. As a boy, he was wise beyond belief. Many people thought his wisdom came directly from the stars. Many people thought he was wise as a dragon. <laughs> now that's impressive. This is the following main themes that Latsu presented to this world. True wisdom does not come from books. You can study all the great books in the world, yet you will have bookish knowledge. Remember, a book describing a mango is not the mango. You must eat a mango to understand. Day by day, <coughs> taking baby steps, one develops intuition <coughs> to understand the great Tao. It is a practical experience not merely reciting words. The dragons were expert in this field. Two dualities exist in the universe. There is a push-pull energy that exists in the entire universe. For air reaction, there is an opposite and equal reaction. There is darkness, there is light, there is life, there is death, there is hot, there is cold. There is peace, there is war. Everything has a duality. Three, 
There is humility. A wise man understands this. A wise man knows the more you know, the more humble you get. The sun in the sky just shines, doesn't have anything to prove. The West think they have all the answers and try to prove, prove it to you. Arrogance and the eagle is not part of humility. All the great wise teachers were humble. At, the, at this point, the people and dragons in Shabbat were in Shambhala were humble. Humility is entwined with the universe. Fourth is simplicity. Tis a gift to be simple. Tis a gift to be free. Tis a gift to calm down where I ought to be. And when I'm in the place just right, I will be in the valley of love and delight. When in true simplicity is given to bow and to bend, I will not be ashamed to turn, to turn will be my delight. Till by turning, turning, I come round. This is a song that everyone would sing in Shambhala. To understand the universe, you must be simple. A man whose mind is complicated will never see the light of day. But Jesus the Christ said these following words. I tell you the truth, it is hard for a rich man to enter the kingdom of heaven. Again, I tell you, it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God. We are living in a world that is extremely complicated. The youngsters hardly have an opportunity to kick back and relax. Their parents have them perform so much after school activities, they don't have the time to think. In fact, if you mention a more simple life, many people will glare you in the eye. Fifth, give for only giving. If you give and expect to receive anything, that is not truly really giving. You may get disappointed to the end. Give like a fruit tree. A fruit tree does not expect anything in return. Its nature is giving. Likewise, the nature of the universe is giving. The wise man flows with the universe. His actions come from the universe. It requires no conscious thought or effort. Six, action within inaction. If you ever saw how we as a humanity is running on the treadwheel of life and never getting anywhere, we have governments that try to help, but they are sinking in quicksand. Everyone is trying to swim upstream. The wise man understands the laws of nature and lets the river glide him downstream. No effort is needed. It seems like today, the more effort we take, the greater the struggle is in life. Most of the great masters of the, of the past understood this key point. They knew the less one did, the more you accomplish. They were in sync with the laws of the universe. Meditation is an art to go inside and discover these practical laws. Everyone can be a Harry Potter. You are a true wizard. Last but not least, violence and conflict will never solve anything. It will not provide fruits on the tree of life. Violence and war are obsolete. How many times does mankind have to go on the same merry-go-round? Around and around we go. 
It's like a broken record. Around and around and around we go. War, war, and war. The only way out of this mess is to embrace the universe. The jewel lies inside of your heart. It doesn't matter who you are and what you've done in life. You can change for the better. You have free will. With your free will, you can use it to find your true nature. Remember, you are the universe. You just don't know it. The Christ. There have been many rumors on the lost years of Christ. We hear stories when he was young, and then fast forward 30 years, we hear about his mission. Many people ask that question for thousands of years. The East has a particular soft spot for the Christ. Many of the following countries said he came out and spent some time learning about the sacred laws. Afghanistan, Pakistan, India, Tibet, and Egypt all have records and documents explaining the Christ's coming and visiting for a period of time. Christ heard about the dragon's world and was quite fascinated by it. He heard the dragons and man lived in harmony for thousands of years. By now, over two million people live there. It was the most sophisticated city known to man, yet for the majority of people, it was a myth. Some of the high lamas in Tibet introduced Christ to Shambhala. It was in the Tibetan's backyard, yet it was so hidden you could never find the entrance if you weren't welcome. You see, still at that time, there were gangs of robbers and thieves. It was the Wild West but it was the East. When Christ entered the grand complex, he couldn't believe what he saw. Dragons were flying in the sky, and he saw a vast modern city. In fact, it would make any city today pale in comparison. You see, this world combined the spiritual path and the practical path. Together, these were central cornerstones, kindness, and the golden rule existed all around. Love, kindness, and compassion were in the air. It was so strong, almost like a magnetic energy. You couldn't help but not feel it. Christ was overwhelmed. He saw a state of heaven on earth. He knew he was home. All the dragons and man welcomed him like a brother. They made him feel he was home. Many great banquets were held in his honor. Laughter and humor filled the air. The dragons and man <coughs> introduced him to the great mystery school. He spent ten years studying and learning. Mind you, the dragons have been there for over 5,000 years. They have an incredible amount of knowledge to share. This was the most evolved mystery school in the land. Imagine having a city over two million and having no crime. No police force or military. No greed nor war. Anger was gone thousands of years ago. You see, the universe is not angry. Man is. The universe is kind. All the dragons and man knew to be aware, moment by moment, the grand power of love. This love sustains the entire universe. Everyone wanted to be there. Everyone expressed the love in their own unique ways. You didn't have to look a certain way or have a particular lifestyle. All were accepted. 
all his man's negative ways was long ago forgotten. You could pray and meditate any way you love. Each person and dragon had their own particular ways. Tolerance of others was a way of life. The golden rule existed in every molecule of life. To be honest, Grice didn't want to leave. He was truly home. Yet he knew he had a mission to bring these same concepts to mankind. The world needs love and compassion. The world needs to find the jewel inside. During those years, Christ grew in leaps and bounds. He looked at his state of awareness when he came and when he left. There was a difference between night and day. Even the Son of God grows every day. Christ knew that you could never stop learning. Even the universe is continuing to expand and grow. As you know, Christ went back home to Israel and started his message. His main theme was the kingdom of heaven lies with him. The Romans weren't quite open to that message. They were the rulers of the time. The Romans were quite ruthless and caused an incredible amount of violence throughout the land. The ultimate pun punishment was putting an innocent man on the cross. This was the dark ages of man. Fast forward today, there is still the dark ages. Peace will come on this earth. The world should have been blown up by now. A new dawning has occurred. Man will discover his true nature. Man will find the jewel in him. Mark my words, millions of people are waking up. The sunrise is occurring in man. Christ's message will never die. It is eternal. There is so much hope. Remember that the city of Shabbat is still alive. You can solve this great mystery by looking inside.
hidden puzzles. The following are some of the hidden puzzles that I wrote during the period of taking this class. Ponder over these. It might help you along the way. This has been a profound, profound time in my life. Signposts are all around you. Spiritual life is the most practical life. Many people roll their eyes when I say the following. The spiritual life is the most practical life. How practical is the spiritual life? Okay, let's go into this. You are born. You take your first breath in. You live so many years. When you take your last breath, you are no longer here. What is keeping you alive? This is the spiritual path. One consciously tries to focus <coughs> on the power of the breath. The same breath that is keeping you alive is keeping the entire universe alive. The spiritual path is constantly rewiring the circuits of the brain. It is constantly modifying the operating system, hardware, and software. Currently, the world at large is ignorant of this fact. We only place importance on the external events of life. This leads to the chaos which we see today. Many people, due to laziness and apathy, live lives like leaves blowing in the wind. One who is constantly discovering the jewel within does not lead a boring life. <coughs> Bored is a state of mind. The spiritual path leads to the transformation of oneself. One goes from darkness to light. Mind you, this is not a metaphor. Wise men have been talking about this for thousands of years. Everything is set in place. Then why don't I see the light within? Have you ever turned on the inner computer? When you place your intention to what you perceive, where you place your attention is what you perceive. If you focus externally, one will never see the light within. Your current agitated brainwave state of high beta can't see the light within. Only when one calms down the mind, your true existence is revealed. Tell me, this is the most practical thing you can do. Smart Cookies The ancient yogis were smart cookies. Mata Yoga was an art and science. I once had a conversation with someone who told me if they used the word Hatha Yoga, they really didn't go much into the practice. I silently didn't say anything. Hatha Yoga is a precious jewel. The way they teach it in the West is like physical exercise. That's only 1% of the light spectrum. The goal is to be one and conscious with a mind, body, and soul. 
wise practitioners close their eyes when performing the asanas. They hold their position and totally relax into it. The mind is concentrating behind the power of the breath. There is a force field of light that one beholds. <coughs> Sweet internal sounds are heard. The prefer perfume of bliss fills the air. The mind, body, and soul are in harmony. Day by day, this experience grows. Remember, the more attention you pay to something, the more attention it pays to you. This is no longer a physical exercise, but a tool to discover your true nature. Your YMCA today only teaches the physical aspect. That's sad because there's so much more than that. It's almost like it shouldn't be taught at all. Granted, it's great exercise. Yet without proper training and wisdom, it is just exercise. Over 50 years ago, I stumbled upon this almost by accident. I combined my Hatha Yoga practice with meditating. Mind you, I still do my meditation practice. Yet the essence of Hatha Yoga is the merging of the mind, body, and soul. I hardly ever do it in a group session. The goal is to silently close your eyes and dive deep within your true nature. It is a sacred routine. One must close the external senses until they have totally opened up the internal senses. Only by blocking out the external world can you experience your true nature. Yes, the effects will manifest into your daily life. This is a simple tip of advice. We are only, we are all fine-tuning the guitar of life. May you someday take these words to heart. narrow think I was thinking about my last post and came to the following conclusion narrow thinking even if the gist was true it still was narrow thinking let yoga be taught everywhere whatever level they get out of it everyone is on their own spiritual and physical journey who am I to judge their journey Everyone has their own unique path. It is tailored made for them. The web of love is tying us all together. Nothing is cut and dried in life. There is no absolute. Mind you, yesterday was narrow thinking. I apologize for doing that. I was excited to see and discover the great combination of Hatha Yoga and meditation yet I presented it in a narrow manner. We all stumble and fall. Hopefully we can learn from our mistakes. I had this nagging feeling that something was slightly off when I wrote that piece. During my sleep, I got this message, narrow thinking. I pondered it over and completely agreed. Someday in the future, what I wrote will be true. It could be a million 
billion, four trillion years. We are all going from darkness to light. Let patience and tolerance be fell on earth. May we realize the great wisdom that exists inside of us. May we ponder over our thoughts and actions daily. Only through our thoughts and actions can we make this world a better place. Food is your medicine. I've been fascinated for about 50 years that food is your best medicine. Nothing can surpass it. Yet in our drug-ridden society, we look for the pharmaceutical industry for our answers. Yes, I believe there are many wonder drugs. There's no denying that. Yet food as medicine does not reach the mainstream society. Junk food is still the norm. We eat junk food and wonder why we get sick and are unhealthy. We go to a doctor who will prescribe drugs. He gives you the drugs and they have huge side effects. <coughs> They're like a band-aid to the situation. Some of these drug commercials say the side effects could be death or a heart attack. Basically, you're playing Russian for a lad. My wife Barbara had a friend who had a doctor gave her a prescription for one drug. Two years later, she was taking 20 drugs for all the side effects coming from the first one. You would think, as a society, we would get the picture. <laughs> We were never taught preventative medicine in our schools. Even modern day doctors only have around an eight hour class on this subject. Those doctors who consider, who consider food as medicine are considered quacks and outcasts. If you want a healthy life, be proactive. Take responsibility for your health. Educate yourself. What is cutting edge today won't be seen for around 50 years. There is a myriad of incredible things you can do to help cure and protect yourself. I'm not saying don't go to a doctor and take drugs. I'm saying take responsibility for your own body. It's the only one you have. This human body is so magnificent. Behind your breath <coughs> lies the essence of life itself. The same breath you take is the same breath the universe takes. What can be more wondrous than that? Yet we are texting on the freeway of life, oblivious to the wonderment of life. Count your blessings. Count your blessings. You are alive. This past week, a dear friend of mine passed away. The older I get, the more frequent this will happen. Nobody can escape death. The more you value your life, the better you will be. 
gratitude is the key. When one truly cultivates gratitude, the mind and body are in harmony. Life will be so much easier to live. Hardships will still come your way. Curveballs will be thrown your way. Yet the mind and body will resist. Remember, it's how you react to a situation that causes you pain. Somehow we forgot that major piece of advice. We think that counting your blessings should only be done when we spend an hour worshiping. After that, we can go on our merry way. But to truly count your blessings, one must be aware of the power behind your breath. This is where true blessings should be counted. The same breath that is keeping you alive is keeping the universe alive. Now, that is what I call a blessing. There are infinite states of being blessed. Most of us are skimming the surface of the ocean of life. We are like seagulls swimming over the ocean. The whales know how to dive deep into the depths of the ocean. Mind you, they can skim the surface of the ocean, yet they were born to dive deep within. We are built in the same manner. Humanity is skimming the surface of the ocean, yet we were meant to dive deep within. This is our true nature. So counting your blessings is truly a state of mind. Most of us are oblivious to our true nature. We are so lost blaming each other and trying to prove our point of view. The wise man simply smiles. He adds, nothing to prove. Microscope versus telescope. We are all experts using the external telescope. With our two eyes, we focus on the external world. Our whole life is based externally. Yet, we have an infinite power microscope inside of us. We have never turned it on except when we were young. We came into this world with the microscope turned on. This microscope is so powerful one can see that the body and mind are one and the same. One can see the interconnectedness of all things. One can see that I'm an intricate part of the universe inside a human body. What magnification level are you on? Is your microscope even turned on? Do you even care if it is or not? What difference does it make in my life? But you don't know. You don't know. You can take a horse to water, but you can't make him drink. Well, you can't put salt in his food. Hopefully this is salt in your food. The truth needs no convincing. We are not trying to sell you something. The truth is not a commodity that can be bought or sold. It exists inside of you. It is keeping you alive. With the power behind your breath, you will not be there. It is as simple as that. Yet are you even aware of your breath? Most of us breathe unconsciously. We are shallow breathers due to this situation. We are chest breathers, not belly breathers. Look at a newborn baby. This is how we should breathe from the belly. 
I could go on and on with the battle fizz, a belly breathing, and the power behind your breath. Close your eyes for a few minutes and sense the emotion of pure love keeping you alive. It is as simple as that. Droplets of Love I find it fascinating that we are wired for biological, chemical, and non-physical droplets of love. It is built in. The Buddhist and ancient yogis have known this for thousands of years. It's only in the last 30 years have Western scientists been studying the effects of meditation on the brain. We have probably hundreds of thousands of unique chemicals that we have never seen before. In our ordinary state of survival, scientists have mapped out around 1,500 positive and 1,500 neg negative chemicals. Yet, there is an infinite amount of bliss chemicals that lies dormant within. Many people, due to stress, try to get drunk or get high to escape the world. They know that the next morning one will have a hangover. Yet people drink year after year and wake up with hangovers. These droplets of love are medicine to the mind, body, and soul. There are no negative side effects. As a matter of fact, the more one drinks these droplets of love, the more in harmony one will be. This is why I always say the spiritual path is the most practical path. This path allows one to have his feet on the ground and his head in heaven. What could be more glorious than that? In this state, one simply smiles at life. There is nothing to say or prove. The world at large may be flaming each other and fighting with each other. <coughs> the wise man knows how to live in the center of the hurricane. Why live our lives like leaves scattered in the wind? The center of the hurricane exists inside of us. What can be more glorious than that? Nobody can do the work for you. It's only by your will alone. That is the first step. Nobody's going to save you. You must save yourself. Yes, help is all around you. Help comes when you take action. Grace comes to those who align themselves with their true nature. Miracles do happen. It's a miracle. <coughs> You are alive. Relax. If you want peace of mind, you must relax. If you want a healthy body, you must relax. Struggling never leads to relaxation. Do you know the tenser you are in any given situation leads to stress? But over time, your mind and body become stressed out. This becomes your natural state. Mind you, this is not your true state. 
your body then becomes wired to this. Note in this state, it's like a mosquito is constantly buzzing around you. One becomes quite irritated. Most spiritual practice says, says, the more relaxed you are, the closer you are to realize your true nature. Being stressed out, one will never discover the jewel within. It's as simple as that. Only when the mind, body, and soul are in harmony can one understand the meaning behind this. Relaxation is the key. One may have the greatest concentration in the world, yet if you aren't relaxed, the door won't open. Brute mental force won't open the door. A person who is totally relaxed realizes the door is always open. In fact, there is no door. This is your true nature. One then discovers that relaxation is a valuable asset to have. It is your friend. Curveballs can be thrown at you. One simply smiles at life. There is no internal struggle. As I said many times before, one lives in the center of the hurricane. This is your true state. Our current society doesn't know how to relax. Even when we are drinking our beers, the mind is agitated. When the mind is agitated, peace of mind can't occur. How relaxed are you in your life? Have you discovered the inner relaxation that exists inside of you? This is your true nature. Grace. Grace is behind the sweetness of breath. One who is grateful in life will most likely experience grace. Grace comes from within. It is a precious state of being. One who has grace is full of love and compassion for all. Mankind is currently in intense strife. The wise man simply smiled, said life. He is full of grace and understands when to keep his mouth shut. Grace is all around. Yet do we have the eyes to see? We spend so much time looking externally that we have forgotten our true nature. Grace is a sight to behold. You are magnificent. You are full of infinite grace. Somehow along the way, we lost hold of our true essence. We got lost in survival mode. We thought the answer lies external, not internal. Grace was just what we said before, a precious meal. Our precious life comes from grace. A wise man focuses constantly <coughs> on the power behind the breath. In that state, one enters the ocean of grace. The mind, body, and soul are in harmony. What a glorious state to be in. Grace is a gift for each and every breath we take. One can touch grace, and your life will change forever. One's attitude towards life will change in so many incredible ways.
duty versus consumers. Most indigenous people have an oath of duty. They promise to sustain Mother Earth. One will never take more than what they need. In our societies, we are consumer. Anything goes. That is a huge difference. When it comes to our health, we follow the commercials on TV. If it's on TV, then it must not be harmful to the body. Eating junk food is the norm. I have a friend who smokes a pack of cigarettes a day. He only drinks soda. He is still quite young. Over time, his body will revolt. The disease will come in. He will go to a doctor and expect him to pres prescribe a magic pill. He ex expects to keep on performing the same lifestyle without any modifications. The commercials on TV keep on coming. They know their product is harmful, yet it's a national brand. Famous people throughout the century have been in their commercials. These commercials are heartfelt and at times bring a person to tears. Yet the product shouldn't be on the market. Millions of products shouldn't be sold if we want a healthy life. That will only change when we develop a sense of duty for the land and a healthy lifestyle. Until this, until then, this madness will go on for centuries. This is again why I say the spiritual path is the most practical path. One fine tunes the guitar of life. The other is oblivious to the laws of nature and harmony. Look at our medical system today. We spend more money on our health insurance than any country, yet we are not even close to being number one. Our health care system is sinking. It's more of a sick based system. Preventative medicine should be the norm. Most people don't even make it a priority. A wise man gathers wisdom and understands the important a fine tuning the guitar of life. Find your refuge within. When you're down and out, find your refuge within. When life is going your way, find your refuge within. When you see people flaming on Facebook, find your refuge within. When you're laughing and playing with your kids or grandkids, Find your refuge within. In the midst of working in this world, find your refuge within. In the midst of sleeping, find your refuge within. When you are walking in nature, find your refuge within. When driving on the freeway of life, find your refuge within. While looking up at the stars at night, find your refuge within. While praying during a crisis, find your refuge within. When you are ever so happy, find your refuge within. When you are down in the dumps, find your refuge within. A wise man understands that in each and every moment, one takes refuge within. We all have that refuge inside of us.
the warranty of your inner car. What in the world is the warranty of your inner car? You buy a car, it has a warranty. Let's say five years. Mostly, if I say mostly, if something fails, the car dealer will fix it. Not all the time. Now, hear me out. We are born. We have this incredible car. It may have some birth defects, but the same power keeping you alive is keeping the universe alive. Unfortunately, our car spends most of its life locked in a dusty garage. This car was meant to be driven on the freeway of life. We spend thousands of dollars buying and maintaining our external cars. The U.S. spent billions to almost no avail for our health care system. Preventative medicine is not the norm. Most of society has no clue there is an inner garage with the most incredible car that exists. This is your spin on the freeway of life. You could call this living in harmony. Life becomes a blessing, not a curse. Remember, this car is meant to be driven in your everyday life. It can handle all the potholes you encounter along the way. Your freeway of life is constantly changing. Nothing is constant, yet we hold off for dear life. Someday, the warranty of your car will expire. Nobody can escape death. The wise man dies daily, and death is no surprise. You can solve this puzzle if you want. If, we are, if you are smart enough to be alive, you are smart enough to find the answer inside of you. Worship. Prayer is one talking to God. Meditation is God communicating with you. Mind you without words. Christ said the kingdom of heaven exists inside of you. There are thousands of external places to worship God. Yet inside of you lies the greatest place to worship God. It is custom built inside of you. You were born to discover this sacred place. We are going from darkness to light. When we light our internal candles, we can help light others. Kindness is a manifestation that comes from within. Kindness is our true nature. We can stop the anger in this world by being kind to each other. All the great masters were kind to each other and humanity. They did not argue and fight with each other. Yes, they had different points of view. There are millions of different kinds of flowers. Each one is created special and unique. You are magnificent. You are created in the image of your Creator. And each and every moment, the power of love is keeping you alive. Behind your breath lies the answer. Your breath is holy and sacred. When you stop breathing, you are no longer alive. Yet, we are unaware of this. We have forgotten the sacred fact. No wonder 
we feel so disconnected because in essence we are. Our lives are only focused externally. We must do both. When one has focused externally and internally, a state of harmony will exist. One will smile at the obstacles in life. There is nothing to say or prove. We will all make mistakes. That is how we learn and grow in life. The Fool In the ancient courts of yester, there existed the Fool. The Fool was the court jester. He entertained everyone. He would be like a Johnny Carson today. Mind you, a lot of subtle truth was there. He performed a lot of parody. Mind you, he could get away with murder, so to speak. He could say things that if you and I said them, we would be put to death. I'm not sure how far the fool could go on this. The fool must be conscious and aware of how far he could go. Even the fool understood that anyone was fair game. Yet there was intense limits. Each court had its unspoken words. Yet the court gesture made you think when he made you laugh. There is a very subtle meaning behind the jokes he said. When you laughed, it made you contemplate what was being said. There was truth behind his words. Today, we have Saturday Night Live and many others. They carry on the tradition. Parody is the means to subtly expose, expose the truth about an incident. Now, not all parody is truth. At times, it is cruel and unkind. In my eyes, if done from a state of kindness, it is quite funny. From a state of anger, it is quite cruel. The full states of mind determines the outcome. The fool at times dictates the state of his mind to the audience. He can be used for darkness or light. It's a two-edged sword. Therefore, the full state is extremely important for the benefit of his audience. He knows he has an important message to deliver. You could say, if done right, he was an incredible channel for his time. Divine and funny messages came to him. He was a philosopher of his time. Who knows when this tradition ended? It was fun while it lasted. The Inner Gurus I found this in some Buddhist texts. It is part of a prayer that some Buddhists say every day. Ablaze with the lights of the five colors, in essence they are the four Gurus. The innate Guru, that is the primordial residence, radiance, 
of your own mind. Experience Guru, my ability to learn from my day-to-day -day life. The Instruction Guru, my ability to integrate whatever Dharma wisdom I have encountered throughout my life. The Root Guru, whatever living masters I have met and from whom I received Dharma transmission and also inspiration. The Buddhists have been studying the divine essence of the mind for thousands of years. Our true state of mind is this true essence. How incredible life would be if we consciously embrace the gurus within. Just one of these could change your life forever. My ability to learn from my day-to-day -day life instead of humanity sinking deeper and deeper into chaos. The innate guru, that is the primordial rest radiance of my own mind. In that state, one would be kind in each and every moment. One would just smile the life without flaming the other. A person would learn how to put his internal garbage on the internal bonfire within, thereby turning his anger into love. Millions of people are flaming one another on social media, expecting the other person to change his mind. Some people think it's funny to flame others. They get a big kick out of it. The wise man says, purify your mind. Your mind contains dust. Your mirror contains dust, so you can't see your true nature. Dust stop your inner mirror, and you will see your inner brilliance. Modern day scientists are saying the same thing. One can learn to rewire the inner circuits. What do you think about this? Stoking the fire. Which fire are you stoking? We are all stoking fires in each and every moment. There is a fire of negative. This fire stokes anger, lion, deceit upon the land. There is a fire of positive. This fire stokes bliss, kindness, patience, love, and compassion upon the land. We all at some given moment stoke these two fires. None of us are perfect, yet we can strive to improve ourselves. We can be aware of our thoughts and actions. What is greater, a person who prays to God and yet his actions stoke the fire of negativity. He could care less about how his actions affect others. The other person simply smiles at life. He has nothing to say or prove. He won't get into a shouting match. This world would be in a better place if we all did this. Currently, the truth is fiction, and fiction is true for many people. When a lie is told over and over again, people will believe it. Not only believe it, but follow through with violent actions. Many people still believe the Capitol riot was a walk in the park. It was a peaceful demonstration. Some part is totally against finding out what really happened that day. 
If the other party was responsible for that dreadful day, they would be up in arms. An eagle needs two wings to fly. When we stroke the fire with kindness, true wisdom is obtained. When we stroke the fire with anger and falsehood, we are living in an illusion. It's like an emperor with no clothes. We think nobody can truly see we are naked, so we continue with this charade. Our democratic system is in pearl. The ones in power want to stay in power. They will do anything to remain in power, even if it will bring democracy to its knees. Just one step away. Never give up on your dreams. You are at times just one step away. At times, the closer to get to your goal, it seems like an eternity away. The first step was easy. At some point, the mind comes in and says, you should give up your goal. It happens to almost everybody pursuing their dreams. Yet at that precise moment, one should smile and realize I'm getting ever so close. These are called tricks of the trade. Many mystics have studied the mental states of the mind. The mind is your best friend, yet it must be trained. A dog is your best friend and it must be trained. Nobody likes an unruly dog that wakes up the neighbors in the middle of the night. The more you train your mind, the happier one will be. One who lives in the center of the hurricane has a calm mind. Most of us are like leaves scattered in the winds of the mind. A dream must be born. Nobody knows exactly when that will happen. One who is calm and lives in the center of the hurricane is patient. One knows that patience is the key. Perseverance is another vital force. Perseverance and being completely calm help in the incubation period of your particular dream. A wise man pays attention to these vital points within. That is the primordial <coughs> radiance of my own mind. The experience grew my ability to learn from my day-to-day -day life. The instruction grew my ability to integrate whatever Dharma wisdom I have encountered throughout my life. In this state, one can most certainly manifest your dreams. One is in harmony with yourself and the universe. There's no inner conflict or blocks. Ponder this over. Take your life to the next level in the video game of life. A kinder world. We all want a kinder world. We all want a safe world for our kids and grandkids. In order for the world to be kinder, you 
must be kinder. You are a piece of the puzzle in life. As a nation, we are a collective consciousness. Our current day politics represents our subconscious mind. It seems like the whole world is in chaos. Our lives are upside down. Nothing makes sense. This COVID thing has really caused so much havoc on the land. Despite all this, we can be kinder to each other. Kindness is the answer to all our problems. A kind person will listen to your point of view without flaming you. A kind person won't seek revenge. We had administration that used revenge as a weapon. It still continues today. Many leaders will bend the truth so they can stay in power. If they don't, revenge will be coming your way. A kind person doesn't get involved with petty politics. A person has no ethics or morals, shouldn't be in office. Our political system is a manifestation of our collective awareness. A kinder person will want a kinder person to be elected. A kinder person who gets elected will work for the benefit of all instead of the party and its views. <laughs> By the way, this is the United States of America. Our great eagle needs two wings to fly. Once again, I say the spiritual life is the most practical life. One who is constantly fine-tuning the, the guitar of life is the wise person. How kind are you in life? What are practical ways for you to help and assist the world around you? Does flaming your fellow man on Facebook solve anything? Peace on earth begins with you. A kinder world will be here if you reach for it within you. Time. Time is so elusive. When I was in second grade, that summer seemed like it lasted forever. Today, summer passes like a thief in the night. Yesterday, I had to go to the bathroom three minutes before the alarm was going to go off. I knew I didn't have enough time to go to the bathroom and come back in time before the alarm would go off. Mind you, my wife was in a deep sleep. I didn't want the alarm clock to rattle her out of her sleep. Those three minutes seemed like an eternity. I remember looking at the clock about three times and couldn't believe how slow <coughs> time passed. I could meditate for hours and time has passed by in no time. I think that the body and mind are the foundation of time being slowed down or fast. There's even a point where time simply doesn't exist. Wiseman says there is only the now. The past and future simply don't exist. Yet we grow old and die. Life is a grand illusion. I love the analogy of going to the movies. Most people see the images on the screen and get sucked into the drama. A wise man turns his head around and sees the projector of lights bouncing off the screen and creating a picture. In the quantum field, 
There is no time and space. There is only the now. Mystics have known this for thousands of years. There is only the now. They were the modern day scientists of their times. One who tries to be conscious of the power behind the breath in each and every moment will understand this riddle. The external world, body, and mindset determines your passage of time. The same external event will be a different sense of time for each individual. Each person will experience time differently. As Ram Dass once said, be here now. Empty Space According to the Institute of Physics, the atom is 99.9999999999% empty space. <laughs> wow! If we remove the empty space from all the atoms of all people, the entire human race could feel in the volume of a sugar cube. Yet, wise men and old have said for thousands of years, the entire universe is alive and conscious. Empty space is filled with kindness. Empty space is filled with supreme love and compassion. Scientists and mystics are both talking about the same thing. Scientists look externally for the mysteries of life. The mystics look within. Scientists come up with the most incredible theories. They definitely think outside of the norm and box. Mystics experience the secrets of life. There are no known words to describe this experience. Talking about an apple is different from actually eating an apple. The mystics will eat the entire apple. They eat the core and all the seeds. Mankind will throw away the corn and the seeds. No wonder we live such shallow lives. I'm speaking in metaphors. Life is incredible. You are magnificent beyond belief. You are the universe. You just don't know it. We are a speck on a shiver cube of life. Yet we are all interconnected with the source of life. This is our true nature. Does this make you excited? You are never alone. Your ancestors exist in this same sugar cube. They are next door neighbors knocking on our doors. One who discovers the jewel within will understand this message. This is your true state of being. The mysteries can and should be solved. mad at the world. So you are mad at the world. You put up a flaming post on Facebook. You are angry. You think you are totally justified in your actions. Yet, you are drinking your own poison. Buddha said holding on to anger is like drinking poison and expecting the other person to die. The world at large is a manifestation of our subconscious minds. When the world at large is chaotic, 
I can almost guarantee you, your mind is chaotic. Being mad at the world and displaying it will never solve the problem. Mother Teresa once said the following. I was once asked why I don't participate in anti-war demonstrations. I said that I will never do that, but as soon as you have a pro-peace rally, I'll be there. Gandhi and Martin Luther King Jr. both used the philosophies from the James nonviolence in their demonstrations. A skinny man from India had the British Empire leave India. One can learn not to be mad at the world and change the world for the better. In a given situation, one can be proactive and not flame another person. People have been dreaming about peace on earth for thousands of years. That dream will never die. You will, yet the dream is still there. It may take a hundred, or a thousand, or a million, or a billion years. That is still a blink in the eye in eternity. A wise man is kind to this world. He knows the interconnection of all. He just smiles at life. He has nothing to say or prove. He would never try to convince you. The truth needs no convincing. He has been there and done that. Nobody gets a free ride. Everyone must tame the inner mind to be truly happy in life. An unruly mind is like a dog barking late at night while you are trying to sleep. I say over and over again, the spiritual path is the most practical path. One must always find the tune, the guitar of life. Emptiness than the quantum field. The wise men of the past talked about emptiness. Modern day scientists talk about the quantum field. Both are talking about the same thing. The wise men of old have been using this term for thousands of years. They were the modern day scientists of their time. It seems like each one of us has this precious laboratory that exists within. The more one uses this laboratory, the more the various instruments go online. Most people's laboratories exist, it is not being used. It's full of cobwebs and dust. The operating system, hardware, and software were installed before we were born. We have an inner microscope that can see, feel, taste, hear, the quantum field. Most people scoff at this notion. Impossible, they say, can't be done. And on and on and on. Good old Christopher Columbus heard the same thing. The world is flat. You will fall into oblivion. What is keeping you alive? That is the question that should be answered and experienced in your daily life. This human body is the crown of creation. At this present moment, we are in a state of chaos. We should be custodians of the life. The world is sinking due to our ignorance. We buy, 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 and buy without being aware of the consequences. Even when we do, 
Nations fight about what should be done. Meanwhile, time is ticking away. This world will change when we experience the interconnectedness of each other. Until then, we rely on politicians to solve the problems. Currently, <laughs> not a good idea. When fiction is truth and tr truth is fiction, not a good idea. You are the missing piece of the puzzle. I know that's hard to believe, yet it's true. Only you can solve this puzzle. Maya. I first encountered this word in India 50 years ago. It means illusion. Illusion means the appearance may seem real, but in reality they are not. Modern day scientists and the wise men of old are talking about the same thing. The whole world is an illusion. When I was 18 years old, I read the autobiography of a yogi. One of my favorite parts was when Yogananda went to a movie theater. The audience was captured by the movie. Yet what was causing the movie to be a movie? There was a projector sending lights which hit the screen and created the illusion of a movie. Well, the wise men of old said the same thing about this world and the universe. Quantum scientists have come to the same conclusion. Yet despite this, we are still living in the Newtonian era. We focus only on the external. A wise man focuses on, on both the external and internal. Humanity sees only 1% of the light spectrum when looking external. There is so much more. We have the hardware, software, and operating system to see the source of all. Maya is sometimes defined as a web of illusion. Mankind gets trapped in it. Mind you, we don't even think we are trapped. That's called the ultimate delusion. We are so trapped that when someone says we are trapped, we simply roll our eyes. Somehow, we are living in a state of apathy and are quite content with it. Today, fiction is truth and truth is fiction. As a nation, we aren't in uproar about this. We are complacent. By bending the truth, it has become the norm. When morals and ethics go out the door in everyday life, the world will become more chaotic. Chaos comes from a mind that has no discipline. A disciplined mind is a mind that is in harmony. To go beyond this illusion is the purpose of life. You can solve this puzzle. How to be lighthearted. How to be lighthearted. Take out the boulders in your inner garden. They are wearing you down. They have no good purpose in your life. Pull the inner weeds. They can and will take over the garden if you don't pay attention to them. Develop a daily habit of being grateful. 
Being grateful every day is the key. One may have the same problems as others, yet being grateful makes you rise beyond the problem. <coughs> Many people make a molehole into Mount Everest. Learn to meditate. Meditation brings helium to the inner balloon of life. It allows one to rise to great depths within where the problem seems like a, mi <coughs> a million miles away. Laugh at life. Laughter is great medicine for the body and mind. Laughter can melt your troubles away. Be kind. A kind person has a kind body and a kind mind. Much needed today. Come from your heart, not your mind. As a matter of fact, the wise man merges the heart and mind. This is called wisdom. In a state of wisdom, one has nothing to prove. He doesn't try to convert you to his point of view. A wise man <coughs> simply smiles at life. He sees the divine <coughs> humor in all. Wake up each day with a sense of, wow, I'm alive. Life is an incredible journey. Learn how to concentrate on the power behind your breath. Most of humanity has no clue about the love that is keeping you alive. Monitor your thoughts and actions. If something negative comes up in your mind, don't say it. Hold your tongue until you have something kind to say. Your true nature is lighthearted. You can change for the better. It's up to you. Maya, deep fakes. I saw this on 60 Minutes a few days ago. It was an episode on deep fakes. As Bill Whitaker reports this week on 60 Minutes, artificial intelligence can manipulate faces and voices to make it look like someone said something they never said. The result is video of all things that never happened called deep fakes. Often they look so real people watching can't tell. Just this month Justin Bieber was tricked by a series of deep fake videos on the social media platform TikTok that appeared to be of Tom Cruise. This is scary stuff. Where are we heading? I wasn't kidding that truth has become fiction and fiction has become true. It seems in the future, nobody will be able to do this. It seems like in the future, anybody will be able to do this. You can smear your opponent and manipulate anyone. Anyone is fair game. This is Maya presented into this world. It's an extra layer from you and reality. What is the truth? Even aside from the <coughs> real truth inside of you, what is truth? What is going on? <coughs> the world seems to tumble downhill like a snowball. Technology is heading in the wrong direction. I've been in this field for around 38 years. I've used this technology to do incredible stuff. Lately, I'm seeing it 
It is used at times without morals and ethics. I even wrote a book about it called Pandora's Box. Francis Hagen said, I am here today before Congress because I believe that Facebook's products harms children, stoke division, and weakens our democracy, she said during her opening remarks. The company's leadership knows how to make Facebook and Instagram safer, safer, but won't make the necessary changes because they put their astronomical profits before people. I'm sure this is the tip of the iceberg. We are being used for companies to make billions of dollars. They know <coughs> how to addict the population for profit. This won't be the last time we hear this. Gently down the stream, merrily, 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 life is but a dream. In the last few years, I had a couple of enlightening dreams. In my dream, everything would slowly disappear into light or a state of emptiness. It was really quite incredible. This is our natural state, <coughs> a state of complete bliss, love, and compassion for all. Many quantum scientists and wise men and old have come to the same conclusion. The universe is a dream. Behind this dream is the source that is tying us all together. We come into this world and someday we will leave this world. It is only a flicker of a moment in time. <clears throat> Yet every one of us has the operating system, hardware, and software to discover our true nature. This is not a theory, my friend. Millions of people all around the world are waking up from their slumber. The jewel exists inside of you. We search for happiness near and far. When I was young, I even traveled around the world looking for it. I eventually found it in my own inner backyard. That is the paradox. We are so sure that it exists outside of us. If someone tells you the jewel exists inside of you, one will roll their eyes. The story has been told for thousands of years. We are living in a dream that seems so real that we call this reality. Yet tell me, what happens to your earthly reality when you die? The bubble will be burst. At the time of death, one goes back to the source of all. You are the universe. You just don't know. Wouldn't you like to have just a tiny speck of that experience while you are alive? The Sugar Cube. How's this for an ultimate mind or illusion? According to the Institute of Physics, the atom is 99.9999. Nine, nine percent empty space. <laughs> wow! If you remove the empty space from all the atoms of all people, the entire human race could fit in the volume of a sugar cube. I don't know about you, but that blows my mind. What do you think? What we think is solid is mostly empty space. Yet according to our senses, the world around us is solid, which it is to some point. Yet quantum scientists know the world as we know it is mostly empty space. 
I first heard the concept to be an empty over 50 years ago. To tell you the truth, I really didn't like the, the idea. The universe that was empty or void was something I didn't like. Yet 50 years later, my understanding of emptiness has changed dramatically. In emptiness lies supreme bliss, love, and compassion. From these divine qualities, all of creation comes. The ancient yogi would say, Sat Chit Anand. Truth is the consciousness of bliss. The seen and unseen worlds all stem from this place, plane of existence. Both the ancient ones and quantum scientists are both talking about the same thing. The divine sugar cube lies inside of you. You have the capability to dissolve this sugar cube and solve this precious puzzle. It's by your will and determination can you solve this puzzle. When you have that kind of conviction, synchronicities will happen to you. The universe will start opening up your inner doors within. This is an endless journey. It will never end. You have been around since the dawn of creation and even eons before that. Yet, we are texting on the freeway of life. We are oblivious of our true nature. That, my friend, is called Maya. We see only 1% of the light spectrum and think that's reality. Many animals have senses more developed than we do. Yet we have the hardware, software, and operating system in place. We just haven't turned the computer on. Our subconscious mind is running the show. We are playing the same tapes over and over again. The world is in chaos, and we don't seem to mind it too much. Tune in to kindness. Some people have the concept that kindness is weak. Before the universe was created, there was kindness. Universes come and go. They get created and ultimately get destroyed. Kindness still exists. It is eternal. It ex exists everywhere in all dimensions, seen and unseen. Today, kindness seems like a misnomer. Currently, on our political process, kindness is millions of miles away. Anger and distortion of the truth are at the forefront. Holding on to power is the ultimate goal. A kind person is considered weak, yet a kind person has you in his heart. He isn't there for power or control. He is there to serve you and hopefully make your life easier. My advice is to only vote for a kind person. An angry person or one who believes fiction is true will never serve you properly. They have their own <coughs> political agenda at hand. Their goal is to stay in power and will do anything to do that. Does that sound familiar to you today? We have political parties that will do anything to stay in power. That means they can't and won't serve you properly. A person who is kind is full of wisdom. 
Where do you think wisdom comes from? Kindness. Wisdom and kindness go hand in hand. To rule. <coughs> One must have both. Anger and lies can never rule properly. Take a look at the chaos around you, then you will see what I'm talking about. If you don't see it, you might want to change your ways. Kindness comes from within your being. If you aren't kind, you are a part of the problem. We all stumble and fall. We all make mistakes. That's how we learn. We can all tap into our true nature of kindness. This world would be in a better place. Adios, senor. Did you know that the Tibetan lamas can leave their bodies consciously upon death? Mind you, not all of them. Lama Glenn Bullock said that 15 out of 20 of his teachers have left the body that way. Imagine knowing your time is up. You sit in meditation. They have a special technique they have practiced for years. In essence, they enter the quantum state of mind. All systems shut down naturally, and they are consciously aware. Unlike most of us, we are oblivious to this process. They use the same process every day when going to sleep. They become aware and consciously drifting off to sleep. Most of us are totally unaware of the process. We are oblivious of natural laws that all sentient beings are in line between. Yet we are oblivious. The body and mind follows universal laws when it comes to sleep and death. Each night when you go to sleep, one enters the deathless state. The kicker is one not being aware of it. Meditation helps bring one's awareness to this state of mind. Before creation, this emptiness was there. It is kindness, love, and compassion. One can learn to cultivate this while you are alive. It's like a tuning fork. Whatever it touches, it vibrates at that frequency. When the mind touches kindness, bliss, love, and compassion, it vibrates at that frequency. Imagine an infinite force field that exists. It is also inside of you. This is your true nature. You are the universe. You just don't know it. The hardware, software, and operating systems have been there since your birth. Maybe it's a good idea to learn how to turn it off. This is a practical piece to solve. As I said many times before, the spiritual path is the most practical path. Rocket Man. The wise men of old were true rocket men. 
they explored inner space. They knew how to ignite their inner engines. engines. They put gasoline on the fire of life to take inner voyages to the beyond. They were discovering their true nature. This is your true home. You have the same rocket engine inside of you. It is lying dormant. The inner fire which dispels all darkness over time. Over time, all your fear, anger, and negative emotions will be vaporized. The sacred silence is older than mankind. It brings a person from darkness to clear light. One who tries to use the power for control of others will never ignite the inner fire within. Safety measures are put in place. A person of power will never ignite the engines. Over time, he will stop trying. <clears throat> this is not saying the inner engines will never fire. It means this person is not ready to take the inner ride yet. Nobody stops you on this inner journey except for yourself. One must be humble and kind. A wise man naturally is humble and kind because the universe is humble and kind. Many politicians think that gathering power at any cost helps this world. It only brings down the world into chaos. Your human body is a vessel to the unknown. Take care of it. I mean, take care of it. Did you know that most diseases are caused by you? There are natural laws the body abides by. You can break the laws, but unfortunately over time, the laws will come back to haunt you. They don't judge you. You just didn't follow the natural law, so you got sick. One who learns how to be a rocket man tries to be in tune with these natural laws in each and every moment. You can learn how to blast off into the heavenly realms and still be walking on this precious planet. Feet on the ground and your head in heaven is the name of the game. Alchemy at its finest. This is alchemy at its finest. Imagine two drops, one female, one male. One drop drips down, one drop drips up. They both, both merge together in the heart. A great union just occurred. This takes place every time one goes to sleep, you enter the quantum field. You enter the state of emptiness, yet you are not conscious of it. During sexual union, that bliss you experience is coming directly from emptiness. Emptiness contains infinite bliss. <laughs> when you die, one experiences this blissful state of awareness. The wise men of old daily practice this. It is said that over time, all your negative traits will disappear into the wind. This is pure alchemy at its finest. It takes one from darkness to light. This is your true essence. The sun is always shining inside of you. We have put dark clouds that have covered the inner sun. This human body and mind are magnificent. Your true state of mind 
is purer than any gold. <coughs> Yet, in our current condition, we have lost sight of our purity. We have all the tools we need inside of us. We just need to gather our will and do something about it. Apathy and lack of willpower will never solve our problems. One must have great motivation to solve this puzzle. You were born to discover your true nature. Yes, it is elusive. That's why I call it the video game of life. When one understands there's a grand video game being played and you are the star, hopefully one might get motivated. Whether you like it or not, the video game of life is all around you. Life will throw you curveballs. Why? One can learn how to get the curveballs out of the park. I love to write. I love to write. It wasn't always that way. When I was young, I hated to write. I loved to read books, but hated writing. I didn't have the mindset back then. Yet today, I love to write. Writing to me is like radar. You know you're going somewhere, <coughs> and the radar shows you where you are. There have been times <coughs> in my life where I felt I was on a ship without a rudder. I was wandering aimlessly in the ocean of life. I found out when you try to be conscious of fine-tuning the guitar of life, life becomes easier. The same curveballs get thrown your way. Many times, by writing around about them, helps me to have a deeper understanding. <coughs> Many times, I try to pass this on. Hopefully, we can all learn from each other. We all have <coughs> our inner wisdom to share. We all have our moment of being there. Done that. I learned that lesson. Yet life will throw you a lesson again to help bring an even greater understanding. When we write, we, <coughs> we bring our stories to life. Stories are a way to reflect on the meaning of life. They entertain us and at the same time tap into life itself. There's always a hidden meaning to a story. You have to look more and the surface level. I am learning throughout my life to become aware of the words that I speak and write. Words have power behind them. One can speak words that leads towards the light. One can speak words that leads towards darkness and helps promote chaos on this land. We carry our own weapons. A wise man uses his speech towards uplifting his fellow man. He understands there is a thread of love tying us all together. With proper eyes, one can understand this riddle.
Buenos dias. Buenos dias. Have a good day. You are alive. Last night you went to heaven, yet you weren't out aware of it. Your ancestors were there. You are never alone, yet you think. It is playing tricks on you. Or should I say, you are playing tricks on yourself. The funny thing is, you should think the external events either cause you great happiness or pain. In essence, you have a clear mind and a blissful body. You have a quantum mind, which means you exist beyond time and space. You're even beyond this known universe. Your mind exists in the seen and unseen worlds. We are all interconnected. There is one mind operating this divine show, yet we think we are separate. In this state, chaos exists in this world. We can all learn from each other. We all have different points of view. My way is my way. Your way is your way. The truth needs no convincing. Being kind is truly the best way. If we we're all kind, this world would be in a better place. Many people think being kind is a form of weakness. Tell me, you think the universe is weak? Kindness created the universe. Today is popular to embrace anger and the power of control over others. We see it in our everyday life. All this does is to put humanity into chaos. They have no morals or ethics. How can they think? How can they rule or govern in this sad state of mind? Mind you, it is a state of mind. Your essence is good. Down the rabbit hole. <clears throat> Down the rabbit hole. We all have all taken incredible trips down the rabbit hole. There are going to be a series of adventures that I encountered along the way. Mind you, these aren't drug induced. No magic mushrooms were taken. Yet the essence of magic was there. Why take a drug when the inner drug exists inside? The rabbit hole can be both an external and internal journey. Around two years old, my brother and I followed the synchronicities of life. We knew we were going on a series of rabbit holes on this sacred journey. Some of these took around 50 years to manifest. The term down the rabbit hole means to me the following, going from three dimensions to the quantum. It may take place externally, internally, or both. It enhances the quality of life and brings great wisdom. I say quite often, the spiritual life is the most practical life. <coughs> In the West, we place great emphasis on this being the last bullet on this journey of life. We don't see the urge nor need. It's a waste of time. Nobody is going to try to convince you. The truth needs no convincing. <clears throat> Someday you will be open to it. 
everything goes back to the source. This is your true nature. There are simply your own personal clouds that are preventing you to see your magnificence. The rabbit hole helps to reshape, remodel, and morph your life. It is pure alchemy at its finest. The more you are aware, the more one will see the true magic of being alive. Each moment is sacred and holy. Even grocery shopping, shopping is a divine experience. Just giving a smile to the cashier will give her such bliss. Somebody cares about me. Somebody is kind to me. Someone appreciates me. That's how we change this world, by being kind. house of the future. One of the first rabbit holes I went down was the house of the future. I've told that story many times before. My twin brother and I were only two years old. We lived in that house only a few years before moving to Newport Beach. Our subconscious mind gets developed from around zero to seven years old. I feel quite fortunate to go down this rabbit hole. <coughs> it programmed my subconscious to think outside of the box. All inventions come from creative thought. I learned at a young age that I could program my life. I've been a software engineer for over 38 years. I'm sure I got into this field because I'm living in the house of the future. I wasn't quite an ordinary child. I would love to meditate and do yoga in the mornings. I believed in preventative medicine. Went to bed at 8 o'clock most of my life. My brother and I love to be current in the latest mind, body, and soul connections. This rabbit hole shaped my life in so many different areas. It brought me the confidence to believe in myself without following the normal social norms. I was on a path that society at the time couldn't relate to. I didn't broadcast it. It was and is an internal path. On the outside, everything was normal. On the inside, an evolution revolution was taking place. I know I was on a cosmic journey. I say the spiritual life is the most practical mind. What can be more practical than taming one's mind? Mankind's mind is like leaves blowing in the wind. A wise person lives in the center of the hurricane. All is calm there. From that place, great wisdom comes. From that wisdom, it is manifest into your life. Mind you, in any given moment, one can return to the leaves blowing in the wind state of mind. Yet through awareness, one can quickly return to the center of the hurricane. This is an incredible rabbit hole I'm still on. We all have the same precious rabbit holes. We are on. There are many going on. It's beyond time and space.
receiving knowledge. Here's another incredible rabbit hole I'm on. Next month will be the 50th anniversary of receiving the sacred knowledge from Prem Rawat. I was just an 18 year old kid. I traveled from France to India with my surfboard. I received knowledge at Prem Nagar's ashram in Hardwar. We were in this room directly below the roof where Prem was playing and talking. We could hear him laughing during the knowledge session. All I could say was this was the most profound experience in my life. Words cannot describe the glorious experience I had. The experience totally changed my life. I walked out the door a new person. Heaven was shown to me. The door became open. I was shown that now you have the tools. It's up to you to use them or not. The diamond exists inside of you. You saw the precious diamond. Now pick up the inner shovel and dig in the diamond mind of life inside of you. <laughs> 50 years later, I'm still digging. This is an endless journey. Each day brings a new experience. One is fine tuning the guitar of life. The goal is to become a better person. The hardest thing to conquer is your own mind. Meditation is one of the tools in the toolbox to do this. We all have a clear mind. It is covered with clouds. We just need to remove the dark clouds and then we can see the sun shining inside of us. The best way to pay back Brent is to use the precious tools in your daily life. Imagine having a car and it's just sitting <laughs> in your dusty garage. Somebody shows you the garage. They dust off the cobwebs and open up the garage. They instruct you to get into the car and start the engine. You then <coughs> take this magnificent car for a spin. What a glorious ride you have. Next moment you're given a garage door open. It's up to you to open up the garage door. You can take this car for a spin anytime you like. Surfing. Surfing is, was, and will always be an incredible rabbit hole. I was just 12 when my brother and I started. The first time I stood up on a waves of joy engulfed me. I was home at last. I felt better being on the ocean than on land. All my troubles faded away. The ocean was alive and conscious. I was an average surfer, not a great surfer. The ocean could care less about my abilities. The ocean became my best friend. It's impossible to put into words. Talk to any surfer. Talk to any surfer and many will say the same thing. There is a direct connection we can have with her. Even one is far away from the ocean. The connection is never severed. There is a cosmic connection between a surfer and the ocean. A true surfer doesn't ride away for fame or glory. A true surfer rides to communicate with the ocean of life. They are one and the same. Being locked in is the holy grail for a surfer. One is baptized by the way. It changes one's life just like being born from the mother. This rabbit hole morphs and changes 
for eternity. At some point, the ocean reveals that the breath is the wave coming in and the wave going out. A wise surfer understands this meaning. Behind your breath lies the infinite ocean of life itself. A surfer can catch a wave for eternity. True wisdom and compassion are there. One is never alone, no matter what external circumstance. One may wipe out. We all do in life. Yet there is always another miraculous wave to catch. We learn by catching waves in our life. We learn to be kind to each other. An angry man doesn't know the waves exist inside of him. Only one who is kind, compassionate, and loving can ride the wave of life. Why, you may say, only the innocence of a child may play in the ocean of life. An angry adult has many other games to play. Betsy to Pallion. Poetry Assignment. I remember one day Mrs. Topalian gave us an assignment. We were to find a poem that we liked and had to read it to the class. But I just learned to how to meditate. I chose this incredible Eastern poem. I don't remember the name of it. Somehow I gravitated to it. I didn't know its meaning. Anyway, all the students gave their readings. It was my turn to read the poem. I read the poem and my teacher asked me, could I critique the poem? I said it was self-explanatory. To be honest, it was at such a deep level, I didn't have the life experience to say anything. She had such compassion, she didn't press me on it. Most teachers wouldn't let me get away so easily, yet a seed was planted, <coughs> and she didn't crush the seed. Years later, I love to ponder life and its meetings. I often wonder how my life would be if she was a typical teacher who had her roles. If you don't follow them exactly, you will feel the consequences. To this day, I'm grateful she had a great intuition and saw my struggle. She gave me an inspiration to follow my dreams. That is what a teacher is all about. I'm still learning the power of words in my everyday life. I feel so honored to have such a teacher. What an incredible rabbit hole this has been. A brand new universe was discovered inside of me. That seed was planted 50 years ago. There is only one mind. Here's another rabbit hole I'm in. Austrian physicist Edward Schrodinger is known for this phrase. The total number of minds in the universe is one. <coughs> in fact, consciousness is a singularity phasing within all beings. I have had this notion 
ever since I was a kid. In the last five years, my understanding and experience have brought me to a deeper level. The Buddhists have been saying for thousands of years that there is only <coughs> one mind. We are this universal mind in essence, yet we have clouds covering this inner sun within. The goal is to remove these obstacles. When one blows away the inner clouds, clear vision occurs. One, you, this is a state of awareness. <coughs> it is not a concept <coughs> or theory. We have the operating system, hardware, and software in place. This is not supernatural, but our natural state of being. Unfortunately, our lives are built only to grasp things externally. Being active, aware of this rabbit hole helps solve the great mysteries of life. And only through kindness can one understand the sacred process. Being angry not only brings society down, but you are drinking your own poison. Even modern day scientists have discovered that when one is angry, over 1,500 different chemicals are released into the body. Imagine a mindset where one becomes the ultimate reality. The person would just smile and laugh at life. He has nothing to say or prove. He doesn't try to convince you towards his point of view. This is our true state. One understands and is aware of the threat of love tying us all together. Quantum scientists and the world of mystics are talking about the same thing. The first golden step is to become inquisitive that there are many paths to achieve. Yet in essence, there is only one path. This is the path of going within. Come join me and millions of people around the world. This is the journey of life. Only you can solve this riddle. Holy moly, chakras. I've been on this rabbit hole for 50 years. I first heard about chakras while I was in India. To be honest, I had no idea what they were talking about. <coughs> it was way beyond my league. Since then, my understanding and experience have been leaps and bounds. In my eyes, chakras are from the quantum field. They are energy centers that sustain the human body. The endocrine system is deeply tied to the chakras. Our state of mind and body is directly related by the chakras. As above, so below is the mantra. <coughs> Disease will first manifest in the chakras and then into the human body. We are heading towards energetic medicine, where we will use quantum energy to heal our mind, body, and soul. Because we focus externally, our entire system is running on survival mode. This means we are running on empty. We are like leaves blowing in the wind. <laughs> The great wise men of the past were in complete harmony with the universe. One who is in harmony with the universe, all the engines are online. There is only one universal mind, yet we think ours is separate. This separation causes much pain and suffering. The art and science are using this precious <coughs> system 
has been around for thousands of years. In the West, people laugh and chuckle and think it's a new age thing. Look at the current movies today. They make a person an idiot for thinking such a thing. We have everything put in place when we were born. Our social conditioning has closed the inner garage and dust has settled everywhere. Yet every night when you go to sleep, one goes back home. The problem is, one is not aware of it. Signposts are all around us. We just don't see them. We see only 1% of the light spectrum. Unfortunately, we think we have clear vision. Only you can solve this riddle. Supreme Bliss, did you know that your true state of mind is Supreme Bliss? Fifty years ago, while in India, I heard this phrase, Sat Chit Anand. Truth is the consciousness of bliss. There is only one mind that is Supreme Bliss and Wisdom. We are not separate. Because we grasp at straws, we are where we are. Our actions are dedicated or dictated by our mental state of mind. Because our focus is only externally, our mind is not reflecting our true nature. <laughs> Just like putting garbage in your inner living room of life, your true nature is a, is a tidy, and clean house. By removing the garbage within, <coughs> one begins to see its true nature. You are magnificent. We are all made of the same mind stuff, which is supreme compassion and love. Mix this with infinite clear light along the way. You are the universe. You just don't know it. Ironically, your true nature never changes, but you do. <coughs> Each sentient being is a jewel to behold. This is an incredible rabbit hole to go down. As I said before, <coughs> the spiritual path is the most practical path. Feet on the ground and your head in heaven. One who is constantly morphing and changing discovers the jewel within. It is a conscious act. Heaven is all around you, but then why is there so much chaos in this world? Your state of mind reflects the state of your world around you. A wise man has nothing to prove or say. Nobody can convince you. You must convince yourself. Nobody will walk this path for you. There have been so many incredible coaches throughout history. They all say the same thing. They encourage us and give great wisdom. Yet they say, only you can put words into action. You must take conscious steps in each and every moment. Faith will take you so far. Faith and taking conscious steps in each moment will help you solve this puzzle.
I have a knack for this. I've come a long ways in this rabbit hole of meditation. Yet in my eyes, one is always taking the first step into the unknown. One must be like a child to go anywhere on this sacred path. A sophisticated adult will never go anywhere. You can study all the grand scriptures and recite them by heart, but they will be just theories. One must eat the mango of love to understand the mango. There's a huge difference between talking about a mango and eating the mango. This is a subtle journey. Many of my friends say they haven't experienced much. When we were born, we never experienced our growth. Plant a seed in the ground. You don't every day pull the plant from its roots and say, how much did you grow last night? Meditation brings one into a state of balance and harmony. That may not seem like much, yet it makes all the difference in the world to one's life. What is the sound of one hand's clapping? That is a great Zen koan. We must develop a greater mindset than our present state of awareness. Currently, our mental state is quite mundane. We are only interested in the world around us. That's the problem. Even when great scientists and yogis say there is only one mind, we simply roll our eyes. How can we understand the great mysteries of life with this attitude? To answer this question, you can't. Signposts are all around us. We just wear internal blinders. My brother and I somehow have a knack for meditation. It is our passion. We are simply trying to tell you the simple tricks of the trade. Mind you, we both have been meditating for 50 years. That is still a drop in the bucket of life. You can solve this puzzle. The answer exists inside of you. The Eight Stages of Dissolution This is a rabbit hole we are on every day in our lives. Whenever we go to sleep, we go through these eight stages. Mind you, we are unaware of them. Every night we go to heaven, yet we are unaware of it. When a person dies, these same steps take place. A wise man practices diet every day. He realizes that only the body dies. You are the universe. You just don't know it. Australian physicist Edward Schrodinger is known for this phrase. The total number of minds in the universe is one. In fact, consciousness is a singularity phasing within all beings. There is one universal mind. <coughs> These stages take place every night and bring you back to the source. Mystic and yogis have been practicing this for thousands of years. You can solve this puzzle. The answer lies inside of you. The operating system, hardware, and software have been there since you were born. The sun is always there. That is your true nature. You have simply placed dark clouds around you. Remove the clouds within and discover your true nature. 
Stage one, earth into water. Stage two, water into air. Stage three, fire into air. Stage four, air into consciousness. <coughs> Stage five, consciousness into luminance. Stage six, luminance into radiance. Stage seven, radiance into imminence. Stage eight, imminence into transparency. A wise, wise man smiles and laughs at death. He dies every day and sees the unity of life. He realizes death is simply changing into new clothes. We don't cry when we wear a new outfit. Everything in this universe is created and destroyed. Even the universe. Yet behind that lies the source of all creation, which is eternal. Stoking the fire. Which fire are you stoking? We are all stoking fires in each and every moment. There is a fire of negative. This fire stokes anger, lying, deceit upon the land. There is a fire of positive. This fire stokes bliss, kindness. Patience, love, and compassion upon the land. We all, at some given moment, stoke these two fires. None of us are perfect, yet we can strive to improve ourselves. We can be aware of our thoughts and actions. What is greater, a person who prays to God, and yet his actions stoke the fire of negativity? He could care less about how his actions affect others. The other person simply smiles at life. He has nothing to say or prove. He won't get into a shouting match. This world would be in a better place if we all did this. Currently, the truth is fiction, and fiction is truth for many people. When a lie is told over and over again, people will believe it. Not only believe it, but follow through with violent actions. Many people still believe the Capitol riot was a walk in the park. It was a peaceful demonstration. Some part is totally against finding out what really happened that day. If the other party was responsible for that dreadful day, they would be up in arms. An eagle needs two wings to fly. When we stroke the fire with kindness, true wisdom is obtained. When we stroke the fire with anger and falsehood, we are living in an illusion. It's like an emperor with no clothes. We think nobody can truly see we are naked, so we continue with this charade. Our democratic system is in peril. The ones in power want to stay in power. They will do anything to remain in power, even if it will bring democracy to its knees. Have you ever been bitten by a mosquito mite? 
The mind itches and you are bothered by something. Yet, you don't know what it is and you feel off-centered. You can't pinpoint what's going on. Did you know that meditation and paying attention to the itch will soothe it away? Meditation will help focus where the itch is. Once you can see it, if you, if you can focus on it and embrace it. Once you embrace it, it will disappear. The Buddhist was an original psychologist. They have been studying the mind ever since Buddha was around. They are experts in positive mental health. Did you know it was only 30 years ago did Western psychologists study positive mental health? We need, as a society, to have a positive mind. How the world would change for the better. Closing. Well, this is the end of this song. I hope you enjoyed it. I had a lot of fun writing this. It's been an incredible adventure. I saw so many synchronicities come into play. This life is incredible. This was a life-changing course. I waited for 50 years for the opportunity to take it. There are so many great mysteries of life just waiting to be discovered. Signposts are all around. Personally, I think that so many people are locked into their tiny boxes when it comes to the spiritual path. The more one knows about the other practices, the more one becomes aware of the thread of love tying us all together. We all we, we allow others to have a different path and rejoice in that. Diversity is the calling in life, yet there is a thread that ties us all together. Humanity would be in a better place if we all experienced that. Kindness is the key to life. We have too many bullies today in society. Somehow, many people get a kick out of bullying their neighbors. We can change this world. You are a piece of the puzzle.